How's it going guys? Joe Totino here back with another YouTube trailer tutorial. Today I wanted to make a short little video about how I go about layering and mixing my trailer percussion for my trailer tracks. So I've written a really quick eight bar trailer rhythmic structure and we're going to break down what instruments I used, what patches I used and how I went about mixing this uh, as well as just some general layering tips and tricks to make your percussion hit a little bit harder. So let's jump into Logic and take a look. So here we are in Logic. You can see my really short trailer rhythmic groove that I programmed uh, this afternoon. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a listen and then we'll break down again what patches I used and some of the plugins I used to mix this down. Cool, so one interesting thing before we get started on the individual instruments is I actually did this in 6.8 instead of the conventional 4.4. Uh, I find that, especially when you're working on uh, film score stuff, 6.8, uh, 7.8, 12.8, uh, these kind of odd time signatures work really well to add a sense of pacing and movement, but also unpredictability to the music. I think our ears are so accustomed to 4.4 that changing something as simple as the meter uh, can kind of make the scene drive along in a way that doesn't feel very repetitive. Um, in this case, I picked 6-8 strictly because I had a rhythm in my head and when I tapped it out, I found it to be in 6-8. So if we listen to the rhythm against the click track. So I'm not sure if I'll turn this into a full trailer cue or not, but just wanted to make note of that before we get started in the specifics. All right, so let's jump into the individual patches themselves and talk about what instruments I used and why I picked them. Uh, as you can see here, I don't have a whole lot of tracks going on. It's really only 11 tracks here, three of which are audio samples uh, and the others are all uh, contact-based MIDI instruments. Um, and I've got a nice blend of organic sounding percussion, hybrid sounding percussion, uh, and then full kind of electronic uh, affected trailer hits and whooshes and impacts to create kind of a larger than life impactful sound. And that's one of the thing that I think it's really important when you're writing your rhythms for your trailer music is that you're using trailer hits and impacts and some of these more unrealistic sounds to add emphasis and oomph to the rhythm. Uh, sometimes percussion alone doesn't do it. It's just not powerful enough. And so the trailer hits, which might not sound great on their own, but when they're put in context to the mix, add a, a really nice punch to the th to things. So even if I take out all the trailer hits in this little cue uh, and just listen to the percussion, and then add back, So you can hear that my general percussion section is kind of driving the rhythm. It's really setting the pace. It's telling us what the main kind of motif is. Dun, 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 dun. And then the trailer uh, hits are kind of accenting and, and putting emphasis on certain percussion hits just to, again, make it a little bit larger and punchier. So uh, let's jump into the individual instruments now. Uh, and you can see that at the very top here, the first thing I programmed in uh, was a patch from Damage 2 which so far from my experiences has just been absolutely mind blowing. Every sound that's come out of this library has just been jaw dropping so far. Uh, and I'm using kind of a damage staple, the Armageddon Ensemble, uh, which was a revamp from their first Armageddon Ensemble uh, with all new samples, but the same kind of approach where it's just these really huge sounding drums that have a little bit of some crunch to them and they work really well as the foundation of any percussion section. So you can see I'm actually just layering uh, two different uh, samples together. Um, and I played this in with a, a weighted MIDI keyboard uh, to get kind of natural crescendos and put the emphasis on the hits that I wanted them to be on. So just the Armageddon Ensemble alone sounds like this. I mean, the thing that just sounds so good. The room sound is great. I didn't even really mess around with the mic placement or the mix, anything like that. 
I did do a little bit of some post-processing here. Uh, I find that especially with low drums, the mid-range tends to get really kind of muddy and messy. Uh, and so I find myself pulling out a little bit of this kind of low mid-range on almost all my instruments. I find a little bit goes a long way. So I'm only doing about two and a half, sometimes three dB of, of gain reductions here. Uh, and then I also put on a multiband compressor just to take a little more control of the low frequencies. So you can see I've got this really on the sub frequencies. I mean, it's really like 100-ish hertz and below. And I just found that on this specific patch, the low end was a little bit unruly, which sometimes you want and sometimes you don't want. In this case, I actually wanted to make some room for some of these other low hits that I programmed in. Uh, so as opposed to using an EQ to sculpt stuff out, I sometimes like to use multiband compression because it does it in a slightly more dynamic way. So not a huge difference before and after, but here's without my processing. And then with. So again, not night and day, but for me, it's just making the samples a little bit cleaner. And then the next thing I programmed in was again, damage two, but now I wanted kind of low hits and impacts. And so I grabbed this uh, low enders patch from the all-star presets uh, and found a really nice kind of low drum hit. I guess this one's called pucker up, uh, which had a really nice kind of distorted tail to it. And I'm kind of using this the same way I'd use a cymbal, where it's kind of accenting just the first beat and then midway through. So I'm kind of using this just to accent the beginning of the, the phrase and the middle of the phrase. Um, but instead of using a cymbal with all the high frequencies, I'm using this low drum that has all the low frequencies. And I think it's important to note that kind of a standard practice when it comes to layering percussion is the lower frequency the instrument is, the slower you want to program and play it in, meaning the less syncopation you want it to have. So you can see here, there are some other patches that have a lot faster rhythms in them. And I just wouldn't be able to create that speed with a, a, a drum hit as low as this because the natural kind of timbre of this sample uh, is what it is. It's a lot of kind of low sub frequencies, very distorted. If I were to program a really fast rhythm, we would just perceive it as noise uh, and it wouldn't sound very good and add the punch to my track that I wanted it to have. So in this case, I'm just using this to accent uh, and with the Armageddon Ensemble, I find that these two blend really well together. And with the click, here it comes again. So kind of just to accent again, the beginning of the phrase and then at the midpoint of the phrase. And then as we move to the second half of this little rhythm, I wanted to add something different to the second half just to differentiate it, give it a little bit of some ear candy. Uh, and so again, I went with a damage to loop this time from the loop designer uh, and actually found a kind of little hi-hat loop in here. The one kind of tricky thing that I had to do was because most of these loops are programmed in 4.4, I had to alter the uh, the end time of the loop uh, to make it work in 6-8. Uh, normally, this would obviously be pulled all the way back, but that didn't work with the 6-8 the time signature. So I just found where six beats were in this, and I kind of just used my ears. I mean, there was no, no math done here. It was just kind of listening against the click and kind of figuring out where I wanted the loop to repeat. And then you can see that I'm adding another instrument here, which is actually a four bar uh, little reverse, which is taking us into the last hit. And I found this was really nice in addition to the, the trailer sounds that I have, which we'll go through in a minute. And here comes that reverse. Really nice sounds. So just damage two alone sounds like this. And that set up a really good foundation for me 
everything else from here on out was kind of just layering different patches with that main idea uh because i found that again every sound that comes out of damage 2 just seems to blow my mind uh so it's more about finding other textures and timbres that i can use to reinforce that and layer with that so the next library we can talk about uh, that I used in this track was a couple of patches from Strike Force, which is another kind of trailer music, epic music staple. Uh, these samples just sound so good. They're so easy to program and they're so playable. Uh, and so you can see I have two Strike Force patches here. Uh, one, I believe, is the yep, low drum ensemble tight. And the other one is one of the bomber drum samples, bomber nine ensemble. The one thing about Strike Force to take note of uh, is I tend to prefer the close mix as opposed to where it is when you load up the template, which is, or you load up the, the patch, which is 50 50 between the, the far mix and the close mix. I like to pull the mix a little bit closer. Um, I find that the room or the processing, whatever they have on these samples, tends to be a little bit too much when I'm using it in this context. Again, I find that sounds that are really low especially sounds that have a big natural reverb or decay to them just don't work well when they're played really quickly and i know that i wanted to make these this strike force patch kind of my main driving percussion where i can create more syncopations against the um the damage libraries um just to create some movement and rhythm and a sense of pacing uh so here is the um big drums from strike force And you can see that as we progress, I'm adding new layers. So as a way to kind of create a natural crescendo within the ensemble, I'm starting out with basically two drums, then we move to three drums, then we move to four drums, and at the end we let, lo we let, let loose with the five drums. Uh, and it just helps the track kind of build. Um, obviously, if I was working on a real trailer track, I'd probably extend this out over a longer period of time. Um, you know, again, to create a sense of movement as if we're progressing upwards, uh, but getting more energetic as the track builds. I am doing some important processing on here. Again, as per usual, taking out a little bit of some low, muddy mid-range. And then I'm also using from Native Instruments the Transient Master, because I found on this particular patch, even with the close mix set, uh, there was still too, still a little bit too much reverb for my taste. So I actually use this plugin as a way to pull out some of the sustain from the drum, um, which really just feels like it's pulling out some of the reverberation, some of the natural room tone, uh, and it makes the drum feel a little bit drier and more upfront. So I'm not doing a whole lot here, but I can be drastic with this just so you can hear what this sounds like. So without this, and maybe I'll just boost this up a little bit. And then with, So you can hear it's kind of sucking out some of that uh, space in between the hits. And I was kind of subtle with this because I was starting to get a little bit of a choppy sound when I went a little bit too much. So I think I had this around 20%. And I'm doing a little bit of a boost on the attack just to give it a point and kind of mixing this in somewhere around here. And then layering that with another instance of Strike Force, again, one of the bomber samples, uh, which sounds like this. You know, one of the things I'm, I'm trying to do when I'm writing uh, percussion pieces or percussion parts like this is I don't want every patch playing the exact same thing. I think that's where things start to sound really boring and predictable. So you can see I have different patches that are kind of playing different things. Uh, and another thing to take note of is the second half here, I wanted this to play really quick rhythms. It's not going to sound totally realistic on its own, but when you put it in context of the mix, uh, it again adds a little bit of, of movement um, and makes the track feel like it's build, building up to a climax. So again, let's listen to this guy. So again, sounds kind of lame on its own. I mean, there, it doesn't sound like it's programmed well at all, uh, but for whatever reason, when you put it in context with the rest of the instruments, it just really worked. So that's what I got going on for that. 
Uh, and then to finish out the general percussion section, uh, I actually grabbed the percussion from Metropolis Arc 1, which I don't use quite enough, so I figured this was a good excuse to experiment with it a bit. Uh, and similar to Damage, I found two sounds that I really liked, and I'm using this just to reinforce certain hits, so it's not playing the entire passage like any of the other uh, instruments are. Uh, it's just reinforcing some of the downbeats uh, and some of the more important syncopations. So here's what this sounds like. Super simple. Uh, I am doing a little bit of some subtractive EQ again, similar to damage, a little bit of multiband control. And then on this one, I also have OTT just to squash it a bit, give it a little bit more harmonics and actually lengthen it a hair. Uh, and you can see I'm actually pushing up some of the, the high frequency band, pulling out the low frequency band. Uh, so without the processing on this, almost giving them a little bit more of a sizzle, adding a little bit of hybrid sound to it, making them less kind of round and drummy. Um, and it worked really well in the mix. So uh, again, just my percussion section alone sounds like this. So from there, I felt like I had a really good foundation, but it wasn't hitting hard enough. And whenever I run into an instance like that, where I've got a lot of percussion samples kind of doing their thing, and it sounds really good, but it's not hitting me in the chest, that's where I look towards trailer hits, trailer impacts, different whoosh bangs. How can I liven this up in a way to add a little bit more of a modern sound, but also make it more impactful? And so the first thing I did actually before programming in these other contact patches, uh, was I went and grabbed some whoosh hits from some of my favorite uh, trailer uh, sample libraries. All of the whoosh bangs in this track are from Quantum, uh, which is a really great trailer sound pack. Um, I just kind of picked my favorite three whoosh bangs, and, uh, and what this is doing is similar to the uh, Metropolis Arc 1 patch, it's just emphasizing certain hits. Now you can see I'm, I'm trying to give each whoosh bang enough time to play out before the next one comes in so that I don't have two stepping on each other's feet uh, and just kind of drawing in little fades to make them either end quicker uh, or in this case actually keep the length of it but just have it fade out gradually. So let's take a listen to just the whoosh bangs. You can get an idea of how I'm adding uh, a sense of uh, impact to this. Cool, so playing that with all of the percussion we listened to earlier, this was definitely something that made a big deal in, in the track. Oops. Cool, so you can hear aside from the tail adding a little bit of sonic interest um, whenever the drums aren't playing, the whoosh bangs are just adding such a nice impact to things. Um, the high frequency content in them is, is kind of rounding out the low end of the drums. I found that they blended really well together, uh, but it still wasn't hitting me quite enough. So the next thing I did was I went into Iserx uh, and found a couple patches from the Iserx uh, Classic Trailer Toolkit. Uh, specifically the organic hits playable uh, and the uh, general trailer hits uh, without the whooshes. And I continued to layer those on top of the percussion. Um, for me, this bottom one here, the trailer hits, I felt like this first whoosh bang I selected, I liked the sound of it a lot. It just didn't have enough impact to start the track. So I layered it with this trailer hit as a way to just add a little bit extra punch. And then just decided to kind of repeat this every two bars uh, just to, again, emphasize the start of a new phrase. Uh, and then these organic hits here, 
which are really great. They're playable hits, so they're trailer hits that are programmed in with some round robins, so you can play them like a drum. They don't sound super natural on their own, but again, they work really well layering with some of the other drum elements. So these guys sound like this. And so I kind of have these doing the same thing I have my Metropolis Arc 1 patch doing. And it's just adding a little bit of extra punch on top. Um, it's got a little bit more high frequency in it, uh, just a slightly shorter timbre. Uh, as well, and so I found those really worked well when layered. Uh, so everything all together sounds like this again. And that's that, no reverb, no external effects uh, other than what I showed you. Uh, I think the only thing I might have left out was on these uh, on the Strike Force bomber patch. I did put uh, an OTT on here to give it a little bit extra, some top end sizzle here. So. Just gives it a little bit of a point, uh, takes out some of the, the muddiness as well. Uh, and I'm also doing a little bit of some uh, subtractive EQ, but nothing too complicated. I've got a limiter on the master just to set this at the proper level to record the video. Uh, and I just wanted to give you an idea of how finding the right sounds and paying conscious attention to what you're layering and how you're programming things can really create a big drum sound without doing anything insane. You don't need a ton of layers to create something that's impactful. I think it's a just, just about finding instruments that complement each other, not having too many instruments play the same thing. I think when you do too much identical layering, it actually takes away from the impact of the track because our ears get used to that really quickly. Uh, and then when you want to add that impact, you just keep stacking on top and it just makes your mix sound really muddy. Whereas if you have certain instruments that are actually playing less, it makes them more impactful when they're actually, when they actually come in. Um, you know, and, and I, I certainly found that to be the case with these trailer hits and the Metropolis arc uh, percussion here, as well as the, the whooshes, which are kind of a nice surprise. So that was it. I just wanted to make a really quick video walking you through my approach um, to layering and doing some basic mixing on percussion. Uh, I think it's, again, about finding the right samples and finding samplements that complement each other. So I hope you guys found this helpful and inspiring. I'm going to put the uh, MIDI file up on uh, a Google Drive link for free download in case anyone is interested. Um, and please reach out if you have any questions for me or would like to see any other specific content in the future. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.